Well, good morning. Welcome to Virtual Church on Tuesday, the 24th of November. Great to have you with us. And great to be able to look forward fairly soon now to the end of the current lockdown, although we're not quite sure what's going to be the conditions in which we come out of, of lockdown, um, what tears will be in and how the tears might be changed and modified. What a sad country. The whole country's in tears. Uh, but uh, we do know that it won't be as severe as it is now, and we very much hope that will involve a return to public worship, Sunday church, uh, not this weekend, but the weekend after. So I'm really looking forward to seeing those of us who won't have to remain shielding because of being vulnerable. And please, please don't take risks if that's you. But we're looking forward very much to seeing you uh, the weekend after next. We're nearly there. Well, we're continuing our look at John's first letter. And I'm now reading a passage about halfway into chapter 2, where John starts to talk about why he is writing. So part of his introduction, I'm skipping over a bit of the early part of chapter 2. Ha have a look if you want to fill in the gaps. Uh, get your Bible out and, and just check through what you think is, is there and, see, and get a picture of John as a whole. But I'm skipping on to this interesting bit. John writes, chapter 2, verse 12, I'm writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven on account of his name. I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young people, because you have conquered the evil one. I write, I have written to you, children, because you know the Father. I've written to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. And I've written to you, young people, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. What I'm going to suggest is that this description of uh, life in different stages uh, tells us that the Christian faith isn't a static state that we attain to, but it's actually an ongoing journey, a journey of change. So we have these three, uh, and if you look in some versions of the Bible, for example, the New International Version that I often use, you'll find that the Greek isn't brought out. The first three are, I'm writing to you. The second three are, I've written to you. I'm not really sure why uh, John makes that distinction. Perhaps it's to make what he's saying more memorable. But he writes to little children at the start of their journey, to the fathers towards the end of their journey, and to the young people in between, who are pushing forward and making their way. And uh, that's really important, that we, we always know that there's more ground to be made up in the Christian faith. We've never made it because God has more to show us and will continue to have more to show us uh, as long as we live. So starting with the children one first, very interesting. Sorry if I'm getting all a bit technical and into my... Uh, theology at the moment, but uh, John actually uses two different words for children here. So uh, for one of the times he uses technia, and that's translated in, again in the version I've used, uh, the Revised Standard Version, as dear children or little children. Uh, it could be infants, for example, but then again they both could. The other word, and uh, when it says I write to you because you know the Father, is a uh, pedia, uh, it's a more general word for children used in the Greek of the New Testament. I think the first one, the, the dear children, the little children, because your sins are forgiven on account of his name. This is a starting place. We can't begin in the Christian life until we know two things about ourselves. One is that we've been forgiven. We are a forgiven people. That's the beginning place. And, and we can't even make a start on the glories of the Christian life until we've had our sins forgiven and know that they're cleansed away. 
and that there is no longer any barrier between us and God because uh, that, that's been dealt with on the cross by Jesus uh, in dying for us. So that's a beginning place for all of us. And we can be in that place of little children, however young or old we are. It's not actually really about age at this point. It, it might be that we might come into uh, the Christian faith at a very late age. And uh, isn't it great to still be God's dearly beloved little children, uh, whatever age we are? Um, I mean, somebody I know actually came into the Christian faith at the age of 83 and it was wonderful to see them taking this step and uh, finding the joy of it and scribbling notes in their bible this is all about love isn't it and just just discovering what an amazing thing it is to be one of God's children it's not about age uh, but it's about coming to that beginning point and seeing that your life however young or old you're, you are can begin all over again and the second thing is to see that we are God's children, that God loves us and that he cares about us. It's so liberating to know that we're his children. Let's make sure that whatever else we discover during this lockdown, that we discover who we really are, that we take time to explore that as, as God's forgiven people and as God's beloved children. That's why I love that translation. I write to you. I'm writing to you. Dear children, little children, my infants that I long to cuddle, uh, it's saying to us. Uh, that's who we are. Well, then for some reason, in both of those, because it's two lots of three, isn't it? Uh, I'm writing to you, I have written to you. Uh, he writes to the fathers next. You'd have thought he'd go to the next step, but he wants to jump beyond that to the father. The fathers. Now, this could mean the old people who had a special status, of course, in traditional societies and were actually respected uh, for being older. Forgive me if I'm sounding uh, like a grumpy old person here. There's no respect these days and all that sort of thing, but it'll get to all of us one day. Uh, but it, it could mean those who have authority. So this is sometimes a way this is used uh, in, in biblical times that the fathers are those who, by their wisdom, seek to guide the church on its, on its way forward uh, as an entity because of the experience that they have to draw on and the values that they've tested in their journey through life. But uh, he says here that he's writing to them because you know him who is from the beginning. And that's what he says both times. And it's the only one which says exactly the same thing both times, is what he says to the fathers, uh, to the older people, uh, pateres. Um, I'm sure this applies to women as well, uh, to those who have reached that stage of maturity, basically. And again, it's not just talking about maturity and age, it is a spiritual maturity. You know the one who is from the beginning. And he's holding this up, and, and coming to it to in the second place rather than the first place, because this is the main thing that the Christian faith offers, to actually know God, uh, to actually know his son, Jesus Christ. What more could we possibly ask for than that? And yet to know that is something we'll never come to the end of. Because God is infinite, we'll always be exploring deeper into what our amazing Father has to offer us. Not only that, it means Jesus too, because when he says, you know him who is from the beginning, well, he's begun his letter by talking about what was from the beginning, and he's talking about the coming of Jesus. And we saw that as an echo of John's Gospel, chapter 1, didn't we? In the beginning was the Word. Who is the one from the beginning? Is it the Father? Is it the Son, Jesus? Or should we even be trying to distinguish them? And of course, this is the Trinitarianism of John, who says, who shows us Jesus saying, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So to know him, that is our ultimate goal. That's the goal of our journey. So if that's the beginning point of the journey, 
to know that we're forgiven by the Son and we're children of the Father, it's also its long-term goal. To know the one who knows us so deeply and so completely because his knowledge is infinite. And yet, from our point of view, to just know him more and more as our capacity to glimpse more of his, his infinite majesty begins to grow within us. So that's Christian maturity, is to keep on growing and to keep on discovering more about God and his amazing love for us and for his world. And then there are very interesting people in between. These young people, uh, you'll find it rendered as uh, young men in quite a few translations. Uh, the, the actual word there, the neantos, that, that can be uh, male or female. It's sort of youth in all its fervour, its desire to make a difference, its sense of action. And again, you can be a young person at any age. I've known some older people who still want to charge on and make a difference and see that their lives leave a, a track behind them of glory uh, given to God. And this is, is what these young people that John is writing to uh, are all about. I'm writing to you because you've conquered the evil one, he says, and I've written to you because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. So, of course, we see a world, and John is very aware of this, with his dualities between light and darkness, between love and sin, between God and the evil one. He's very aware that uh, the world that he's describing is being resisted by the world around us. The world of God's presence, God's love, of his forgiveness and being his children uh, is opposed by a world that is actually about worldliness. We'll see more of this next time. About people giving themselves over to destructive things, about people hurting one another and opposing God's love and opposing his laws. So we've got to somehow make a difference in between. This is why it's such a tragedy for the church when we lack young people. Because, of course, although you can be this kind of young people at, every, at any age, we see it in young people. And I remember this from my own days as a relatively new Christian. I got beyond the first stages of uh, trying to understand what it meant to be forgiven and get a grip on what the message of the Bible is. Off to work for a mission. All my best stories about being a Christian go back to those days when I'd sort of uh, set off and bump into somebody. And because I was so full of eagerness uh, to share, I'd, I'd, I'd find God at work. I'd, I'd find myself bumping into somebody who was thinking about killing themselves. And, and we'd find a way forward for them to find new meaning and purpose uh, in their lives. Uh, it was just an amazing time uh, to see God at work in my life back then. And I'd love to tell you more of those stories if you're interested. Uh, talk to me about them. Uh, so this desire to make a difference, I think, should be there for us. Uh, as soon as we've got beyond the, um, the milk stage and onto solid food, uh, what can I do to serve God? There's a couple of key things in here, though. You're strong, he says, because the word of God abides in you. This isn't about charging off thinking, this is me, and expressing our, our, our own pride and our ambition. This is about us having the word of God. And don't forget, that doesn't mean only the written word. That means Jesus, who is the living word of God, living inside you. It's through his power and through his spirit that we overcome the evil one and we make a lasting difference for good and not just a difference that is about us arrogantly stamping our own initials on what we believe that we have to offer to the world. That second kind of activity tends to actually just stir up dissent and strife and 
people uh, wanting diff different things and have a different vision clashing very badly with one another. But if it comes from the word of God, Jesus himself living inside us, then remarkable things can happen. And it's why we must make sure that we have people who are visionary, who are young in spirit, who are missionary, who want to reach out uh, in our churches and fellowships, because without them, we will just grow old, genteelly, I'm sure, together, and pass away, and possibly rightly so, because we haven't taken on board the call from God to bring light to a dark world. I'm going to finish by referring to the older people because I know that's a lot of us who are shielding or perhaps watching virtual church um, and taking part in it because of being vulnerable and not being able to get out and, and do those dramatic and world-changing things. Don't forget, whatever you're going through at the moment, that the goal is to know the one who is from the beginning. Use your time, whether it's uh, good times that draw you to the Father's love and joy and peace, or whether it's hard times that drive you from the things that don't give you lasting satisfaction, because they're things that pass away. Keep your eyes on that goal to know the one who is from the beginning and you use times like the current one to focus you even more on the things that last. Everything else about us passes away sooner or later, but to know the one who is from the beginning, well that is life and that is eternity. Shall we pray together? And as we pray, let's just think of our journey so far. Let's reflect back on the time when we were those dear children, however old we were at the time, or young, discovering for the first time the joy of the Christian faith, of forgiveness, of being his dear children. Let's maybe think of when we were young and vigorous and wanted to get out there and change the world and sometimes made terrible mistakes while we were doing it. But God still loved us and his word came to abide in us. Let's think of the great goal of our journey. To know the one who is from the beginning. And so let's give thanks for all the way that he has guided us so far along our way. And let's ask, even now, in the hole that we're in of a pandemic, to know him more and more each day. Amen. So thanks again for joining me on Virtual Church. God bless you and see you again on Thursday. Bye now.